Hi, I'm Stephen Walls. Welcome to a new episode on my Design to Visualization YouTube channel. I have been in the AEC industry since early 2003, helping out numerous companies across the world and have taken on many roles, from drafting and designing to model managing and implementing company-wide BIM and SIM standards, procedures, and workflows. Welcome to my weekly Design to Visualization video release, where I'll be reviewing advanced tools and workflows covering a multitude of design and visualization programs currently being implemented within the AEC industry. If you have any specific requests on what you'd like to see me review, or would even like to collaborate on these, feel free to reach out to me at stevewalls at hotmail.com. That's S-T-E-V-E-W-A-L-Z at hotmail.com. If you like what you see in these videos, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel in the lower right hand corner so that you can stay in the loop as I release new videos. Hope you enjoy. For this demonstration, I'm going to review how to quickly generate a pressure network from an object. I'm going to review swapping parts for the pressure network and modifying some of the parameters thereafter. And what you can see here is we have a number of existing networks that are being data referenced in. We've got two force main alignments and a water and a water main alignment, and this polyline right here is going to be our proposed design. And as you can see in the data shortcuts section, these are coming from the VBE file, which is our survey base existing. And you can see I have a couple little legs included in this polyline at the beginning and the end, and. The reason for that is to make sure that it includes a fitting when I convert this over to a pressure network. Um, those fittings are going to be applied at those connections. So we'll create it. We'll accept the flow direction. We're going to give this a name of proposed force main reroute. The network parts list, we'll change that to custom water, and this is going to be an 18 inch. And the reason why we're using a custom catalog here is because this, this has been generated from another application that gave us um, the ability to import a lot more parts. It's a more complete catalog. So the depth of cover, we'll give that four feet. And we don't want to erase that line work because we eventually want to create an alignment from that as well. And there you go, we've got a quick quick and dirty pressure network. We're going to erase these little legs. We're going to swap this part because we don't want an elbow. We want to change that to a T. change the part type to T and the part family we have T and a reducing T since we're going 18 inch to 18 inch we're going to keep it as just regular T we're going to hold the elevation and there you go and now we'll go to the end actually let's let's delete these real quick and reconnect because what's going on here is we've got deflections and anytime there's a vertice within your polyline that you're be, that you're converting to a pressure network it's going to automatically assume that a fitting should be applied at that location and these are just deflections we've got a five five degree maximum deflection allowed for this size pipe Wait till you see that glyph and it'll automatically connect. Coming down here, let's delete this pipe. And we are going to be plugging that force main right before that connection, so we will be 40, 45 degreeing into it at that connection. Now we're going to create our alignment. And typically, the, the typical process is to create your alignment first, 
So when you do generate your pressure network, you can associate that with the network. So we're working a little backwards here. Let's call this proposed force main reroute. Apply some styles. We're going to uncheck the add curves. I'm not sure why that is always defaulted to check, be checked. And let's get rid of these PI. Select them and delete. We don't need those references. We're going to turn off these markers as well. That's it. Okay. Looks a little better. Let's change this. And now we're going to edit this alignment because we don't want those legs included in the alignment either. So we're going to delete the sub entity. Right there. Just select the that line. And you can see that station, it's not necessarily starting at zero zero. We can redefine that as well. So we'll select the alignment again. Go to alignment properties, the station control, and change that beginning station to zero. And just accept this. It's basically giving you a warning that you're changing the references. But that's okay. All right. Now we're going to update the network properties. So in the Layout Settings tab, we have an option for alignment name. Let's go ahead and reassign that. And now anytime we create new parts along this alignment, it'll reference that. Unfortunately, it doesn't update the existing parts that have already been designed. So you could either go individually part by part, fitting by fitting, appurtenance by appurtenance, and change them, or you could select the fittings as a whole, select all of them, find your reference alignment in the bottom here, and update it wholesale. Now if we go back to the fitting properties, can see that the reference alignment is already defined just to check another one and make sure everything did apply. Yep, the reference alignment is defined.